are back. It is Omi D Learns, the ODL experience here with more or less hey. right there in the building. Like this is episode Episode four. Season two. But it's but it's part three part of three. religious history, because we've got like a little intro one in there that was like super fun to do and it didn't take uh any writing. Um Man, I'm just reading through uh, all this crap that I wrote, and I'm I'm just gonna skip half of it. He's like, yeah, right there, with that no card. BS, BS, BS. Nobody yes. wants to talk about that. Look, <laughs> if you didn't listen to episode two or episode one of religious what? history, you are totally missing out. And in episode two, we talked about King Solomon. Mm. Mm. And you you mentioned something. Um, what was that? Well, King Solomon hired a lot of people to work for him, including the creation of the Freemasons, as a lot of people mm -hmm. be it known. And this temple was a very large temple. It, the The amount of money that you said was uh, raised equivalent of a hundred million. I yeah, hundred percent. I mean, accurate. had to be big enough to be, um, you know, to hold the Ten Commandments in it. It was huge, okay? I, there's, I actually have a Bible. There's two different versions of the Bible. There's a version of the Bible that actually has the actual measurements of King Solomon's temple in it. Really? <clears throat> and so you can learn about how large it really was. And the interesting part is there were three levels to this temple, the third level being where the Ark of the Covenant was stored. And you had to have certain access to be able to go to that level. So certain people were only a level allowed to be on the first level certain people were only allowed to be on the second and the first level and there were some people who had clearance to go through all three levels so were they like wristbands it was it was it was the like, blue me, wristband me... it's, it's, <laughs> there's a guy outside standing there's like you ain't getting in here with that wristband you got to have a blue wristband he's like damn so yeah, yeah like 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 they got them axes on your hands but you put chapstick on it before you walked in there yeah, so okay. like well i got chap chapstick on my hand now now i can just wipe this x off this like mm -hmm. i can drink look i ain't got no x let me in the, let me in the mm -hmm. third level so i can see what's in here ark of the covenant mm. but yeah it, it was huge so that's cool i'm not gonna divulge any more of the secrets that i cannot about the wu-tang clan but it's interesting. So go do your googly Google research I, and you find more. Yeah, I mean, all that tells me, I mean, the only thing I actually heard you say was that <laughs> during episode two, I talked so much, I didn't get let, let you get that fact in there. So no. you're welcome. No, well, thank you for allowing me to get it on episode three. But you know what? Sometimes I like to hold a little bit of something to kick off the next episode with because, you know what? What? what it, these people now that are watching episode three are like, holy crap, I thought episode two had some important information. Let me go hit the Reddit and spread all kind of lies about what this He speaks. Was. He told me all the Wu-Tang secrets. So That you... more or less guy didn't let him talk in the last three episodes. He finally talks. It's like, look, trust me, if I finally start talking, you'll be like, what happened to more or less? This guy never shuts up. <laughs> Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back. He want the regular guy to talk, not this drunk Where'd crazy dude. Where'd that guy dude. go? <laughs> mm. Mm. The other drunk crazy dude. Yes, the mm. one that seems like he knows what's going on today. Episode three, the final one, religious history. We're going to wrap it all up. I've seen the chronological timeline for this one. I am excited and ready to see how this all turns out. We're getting there. We finished the BC. We finished with uh, the introduction of Jesus. Jesus is in all kinds of other scriptures. So he's not just dedicated to one uh, religion. In fact, he's mentioned in the Quran 25 times, which is really? more than Muhammad. Yeah, more than Muhammad, Jesus has talked about in the Quran. I've never read the Quran before. You should. I'm going to do that. Like, why not? I mean... Is it more interesting than the Bible? I don't know. Okay, because I, I don't know. read that but, even. I mean, they're all interesting to tell to tell the complete truth because it's it's a bunch of stuff from uh, prophets like Muhammad, mm -hmm. uh, Buddha, mm -hmm. Socrates needs to be on that list. Yeah. Jesus needs to be on that list. Like people who wrote all this stuff for uh, how to live your life and what to do, they're all messiahs. They're all messengers of God. Jesus is the only one and only according to Christianity that is the son of God. Everybody else just says, no, 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 I'm speaking for God. And he's like, oh, no, same guy right here. One and the same. I agree. Do you agree, agree. with what? Fact? Oh, Fact. Buddha? Yeah. 
That's who I agree with. That yeah. guy. Um, also, none of the prophets, none of them, not a single one wrote anything on their own, like including including Socrates, like Plato wrote everything he, he said. Socrates just stood up and talked to people the whole time. What a job. I want to be mm. that guy. I just want, mm. I, I'm just going to talk. You write everything I say because, yeah, me. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> So that, that Jesus guy got, got popular because he, uh, he really talked about believing that an outward compliance with the law was not the most important thing and that values such as love your enemies was far more important than following the law, which is kind of why he got crucified. He gets crucified about thir 33 AD. So Jesus was a liberal. Yeah, and the conservatives like, crucified him. Cr yeah, the the Romans were like, follow the rules. He's like, we should love everybody. Like, we don't love everybody. We 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 need to stick to the rules. The rules are the rules, and you follow. Like, get them up on there. <laughs> get them out of here. <laughs> get them my city. Yeah, but I mean, he's he's the one that we get to uh, celebrate the entire year based on his uh his birthday. So one AD one CE is uh is that guy. Um. Yeah. And then after these Romans um, crucify him, what do they do? 324 AD, they adopt Christianity. Whoa. Whoa. They're like, oh, oh. wait, it, maybe it was a good idea. Maybe we should love our neighbor. Oh, so about that Craig Jesus guy. So we think he was really right. And uh, we kind of like what he was spitting. So we want to bring him in. And just, matter of fact, we were down with Craig Jesus before. Y'all just didn't understand it. Oh, yeah. No, it was a misunderstanding. Um, I, I heard from this guy that said that, uh, it, you know what? We're sorry. Please <laughs> forgive us. We repent. Yeah, here's a Bible. <laughs> yep. You have to forgive me. Yeah. yeah. And they did. They moved on. I mean, it didn't last long. Like the fall of the Roman Empire is going to happen about oh, 90 years later. There you go. Um, not related to adopting Christianity. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in between then, what also happened is the uh, Codex Sin Sinaticus. And what that is, is the first time a bunch of priests got in a room and decided – which of these scripts were the official Bible? Yeah, you got to give those priests something to do when they're in a the room. Uh, to keep them busy. Like, <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. They are very mm. busy people. Let's 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 get somebody to light these candles. No, let's uh let's read these books, and you tell me which ones are the Word of God and which ones are uh just uh, stolen from another religion. Close the door. Close the door. Close the door. Nope. <laughs> All right. So they the the. The first Bible is around um, 350, 393. It's canonized, so it's officially. It's the same thing that they do with this first Bible that they do when they say, "Oh, this person's a saint," so they've been canonized. It, oh. it becomes the 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 official Bible. Nice, nice. Yeah, I want to be canonized. Or... One day, I mean, what are you going to be the uh, the saint of? What's going to be your saint day? Saint of podcasting. <laughs> you take a long, you take a long sip as all the Catholics are like, "I'm gonna hope he burns in hell." <laughs> Ooh, but only on your saint day. I don't believe in hell. I said it. It's not a matter of belief. You have to understand it. I do, and I understand it. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then, what else we know that's not a belief is this guy Muhammad. Born in 50, uh, 570 AD, 570 CE, current era, um, common era, Craig's era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he he lives for about 62 years, and he's he's a big deal. I mean, the Islam religion is is based on him. He's he's up there with Jesus and Socrates and Buddha and all the prophets who. 
speak religiously to people and tell them to be good people and follow these moral moral laws like moral less like let's yeah. get it done um doesn't take too long 680 uh ad there's a division which uh -oh. still exists between the sunni and the shiite muslims so muslims are anybody who's uh, following islam mm -hmm. and there's a divide there that i think we realize is still happening but they're not the only ones that break up because in 1054 the roman catholics and the eastern orthodox oh. break up as well so christians are going through a little uh uh, breakup as well. Breakups are really hard to do. Why is that? That's just some song some guy was singing that I used to hear on Caleb uh, all the time. Hmm. Yeah. Well, it was really hard because about 40 years after uh, uh, the the Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox broke up, the first crusades begin. And it's a, this battle. Yeah, it's a, an official holy war sanctioned by the church in an attempt to recover the Holy Land back from Islamic rule. Like, we want Jerusalem. Give it back to us. So we're going to go kill everybody in the name of God. Yeah. And and every single one of them argued that it was um, sinful to have war. Like, war was absolutely the wrong thing to do. But if it was blessed by a pope or a mm. bishop or a king, then it was the will of God. And we're going to do this for 200 years. 200 years they ran around terrorizing and killing people. And what was that, Northern Africa? Um, It was, it, I mean, it was, no, it was Jerusalem. <laughs> they're, they're trying to take over Jerusalem. So the Middle East. Uh, Middle East. Yeah. Bastards. Yep. So um, it kind of burns out when the <laughs> Muslim, the Muslim faith gets uh, more unified mm -hmm. and the sheer cost of traveling that far for war and now you don't have these two sides battling against each other like they're making up a little bit now you've got a united front against you and they stop sanctioning these crusades but people still do it then in 1320 oh. this guy pope john the 12th wait a minute wait a minute interesting tidbit here knights mm -hmm. of templar Mm -hmm. And uh, the hats that the Shriners wear. Uh huh. Do you know about that? No. You know about the hats that the Shriners. You know about I, uh, I believe it's called a fez. You know mm. what a fez is. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, it's got the uh the tassel. You know why those were red? Red tassels? No. You know why? why? The hat. So I believe the story. Oh. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong out there, people. That's what we do these things for, so everybody can learn. But I believe what I heard that someone had told me that Craig had told him that they used to, after killing Christians in the crusade, they dip their fez into the red blood of them as a sign that they've killed someone and put it on and continued their war. And that's how they've got the red color on the fez. That's what I heard. And the Knights of Templar are somewhere lodged in the Masonic Order. That's all I'm going to say about that. that. That some weird, awful way reminded me of communion in church where I'd take the bread and I'd dip it in the wine. <laughs> I'm like, take that, Christian, you did! Ah! Man. Uh, well, the Christians were killing the Muslims, but yes. Oh, well, you know. Well, I, don't know. I might they always, be wrong. They always say, "Was well, the uh, blood of Jesus?" So what is that? This is the blood of Jesus. Oi, I don't know. Maybe they turned it into it. Mm, I don't know. With water to wine. Wine to water. Yay. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that's crazy. Go for it. Hmm. Time to dip some tassels. Um, speaking of dipping tassels. <laughs> 1320, Mr. Pope John the Twelfth oh, uh, laid the groundwork for witch hunts <laughs> and formally set up the prosecution of witchcraft. And if you've seen anything from uh, what's it, Robert Langdon, who's mm -hmm. the, uh, the 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 fictional um, symbol uh, guy, um, the whole thing was about keeping women down. 
Oh, um, and I know that's a work of fiction, but we just watched it the other day, and it has everything to do with the persecution of witchcraft from 1320 and Pope John the Twelfth saying, burn witches and anybody who claims to know something that they shouldn't know. And people went nuts trying to find witches, create witches, claim people were witches, and burning them. Man, so there's an interesting series, if you've ever heard of this game, called Castlevania. And mm -hmm. Castlevania has an origin, uh, or Dracula's origin, with his disrest with the world that Castlevania started, um, came from a religious witch hunt at a time, and they killed Dracula's wife because she was spreading science to the rest of the world. Although Dracula, being super old and super smart and all that good jazz, he had taken this woman on. And there was some religious stuff and they burned her. And there was a pope. And so if you like stuff like that, make sure you catch Netflix and sign up for that subscription. It might go up a little bit next year, but Netflix is always quality entertainment at 1080p and coming soon in 4K HD. Check it out. Netflix. Nailed it. We're so good at this. Bam! <laughs> Did it again. We just need that real sponsor one day. Come and on. we'll, we'll Bring it. We got the bring it for you. Man, just talking about sponsors makes me um, thirsty for some Dr. Pepper. Nothing is better than Dr. Pepper on a hot day when you're at the Texas Rangers <laughs> baseball game on a dollar dog night this week, this Wednesday Ooh. here. Come out as the Rangers are facing off against the Seattle Mariners as they try to take the number one position in the West AOS. Dr. Pepper, sponsored by Dr. Pepper. You ever done any uh, sports casting? I have. I've done a lot of hmm. sports casting. I've done a lot of football games, Texas State Championships. Kyler Murray, I've done a lot of his state championship games. I've seen that kid win in Cowboy Stadium more than I've seen the Cowboys win in Cowboy Stadium. E Speaking of winning, <laughs> Martin Luther, <laughs> that guy, 1517, um, decides that he doesn't like what's going on with all the Bibles being in Latin and people being forced to go through priests and popes and bishops in order to get the word of God that they so deserve. And so he's a monk and he translates everything into German because that's the common language and provides the Bible for everybody. Wow. German is the common language, and that's one difficult language to learn. I will say that much. I'm trying right now. It's tough. I mean, he did. He went from Latin to German. Yeah, but German is. Would you, have you ever tried to learn German? Nine. Yeah, that's about as far as I got. There's so many. Look, they don't even conjugate. I don't think. I think it's just a bunch of these. That that it's it's a mess. We can have. You must one. conjugate. You can conjugate to save lives. That's all I got to say. All right. So Martin Luther did a lot of conjugation, and yes. he provided the Bible to everybody. And it's this great thing, and he's seen as like a, a great person. But he wasn't all good. In fact, he didn't just translate the, the Bible. He also wrote a bunch of stuff um, that was saying that the Bible is the only true source of God, and anyone who doesn't follow the Bible must be killed or removed because they don't follow Christianity. So he is the reason that people started burning down synagogues and killing Jews. That bastard. Well, I mean, people loved him, loved what he was saying, and so they started the Lutheran Church. So the Lutheran Church is down with killing people that oppose them? Uh, you're supposed to believe in the same God as them. According to Martin Luther, I mean, I, I, I can't tell you modern day. I, I would hope that some people have some better morals than that. I, I imagine that they do. Uh, and tell us about it in the comments down below. Learn us, because I don't want to absolutely accuse people, but I know for a fact Martin Luther started some shit. He did. Yeah. Yeah. So learn me something different. Yeah. 1534, Henry VIII. Um... He's got this affair with this lady, <laughs> Mary Boleyn, who was a lady-in-waiting for his wife, Queen Catherine. Mm -hmm. And, like, full-on affair, like, ain't even hiding it, not worried about it. But then he meets her sister, Anne Boleyn, yeah. and she said, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're a married man. Can't do that. And so in order to <sighs> jump from Mary to Anne, he had to find a way to get rid of Queen Catherine and the church said, no, we don't do that. And he said, no, I'm the king. 
I got a new church. I'm going to call it the English church. I'm in charge. I need a divorce <laughs> because this hot little sister over here won't join me, and I need her to marry me? Yeah, to do my thing. So, the Roman Catholic Church and the Church of England are created. Off to make divorce. Oh, yeah. It's so um, bad. Fast forward, fast forward, and this is a good one, though. We finally see religion brought into government rule, and in a good way. We see freedom of religion in the U.S. of A., 1791, formally Ooh. introduced to the Bill of Rights and added as an amendment to the U.S. Con uh, Constitution. And that kicks off some shit around the world. Mormons, 1823, specifically September 21st, 1823, this guy Joseph Smith claims that he sees an angel Moroni. Uh, and he wrote the Book of Mormon. And several witnesses say, yep, I saw him talking to the angel. That is interesting, because where was he when he wrote that book? Utah? I No, it was uh, New York. <laughs> Isn't that interesting how many creation stories involve someone seeing an angel and talking to them? I, I'm, yeah, uh, hallucinogen, <laughs> man. I'm pretty sure it's New York. I'm pretty sure. I'd love for somebody to help me out. Let me know where, where was he? He was somewhere here in the U.S. Um, 1931, we get Jehovah's Witnesses popping up. And then 1939, 1945, that whole Martin Luther thing comes back, and the Germans are at it again, and we see the unfortunate events of the Holocaust. Oy, oy vey. That was a, that was a, day, oy. All because of Martin Luther. That um, I, I, I don't know that we can blame him directly, because I think there were some assholes around. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I... It, it really, it, it, the, the quote where somebody's like, well, one third of the population wanted to kill one third of the population and one third of the population stayed quiet. Like, it's amazing how many people stay quiet through, through stuff like that. It's crazy. April 6th, 1830, Fayette, New York was where uh, Mormonism was founded. New York, I had it. All right. So I did read something. Yeah. All right. 1954. Hey. This guy, L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> is a famous science fiction writer mm -hmm. who, in his drive to publicize his books and push them, goes bankrupt mm -mm. and had no other choice to go, uh, I'll write a religion. You know what? That's a good backup plan. It's way more solid than the military. Can't make money doing this. I'm going to start a religion. Gets that going. Now around the world, um, 4,300 different religions that are at least registered or documented, like lots of them. Save it, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Save yeah. me with your magic. Church of Scientology. Like, do you really buy into the Church of Scientology? Let's just be real about this, right? You literally buy into it because you gotta true. have some. Mm -hmm. you gotta have some money, and then you gotta. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what you gotta do to get your way out. That's a whole nother podcast for a whole nother. Uh, people not us we're not going into that we've already given you enough knowledge today about religious history look once again i'm here i've learned a lot of stuff i've confirmed a lot of stuff that i did believe that was going on with religion and i think we're going to uh some people is going to learn us something some people are going to go those guys were not right there and i'm gonna learn them something in these comments down here and i think that's what you should do if you uh if you can learn us something for real. And I, I hope people like this and it was like kind of a, just a rambling on about history and things that I could find to talk about, but coming up, I'm going to talk to you about this filthy, nasty, disgusting statue of Liberty. That bitch. I mean, hmm. <laughs> we're going to talk about bones because yeah. I'm going to convince you that they're mutations and we've got all these mutations everywhere. And yeah. And we're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about smart toilets. Oh, shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm geeked about smart toilets, and I'm geeked about... What was the first one you said? The Statue oh, of Liberty. That, that bitch. Um, yeah, we're going to get back to it. We're having a great time here. The ODL Experience. Thank you for tuning in. Season 2, 
episode four, version three. I can never get that shit right. It's Religious like, history in the books. <laughs> there we, we go. did it. How do we keep up with Star Wars? Anyway, we'll see you guys and gals back next time on the ODL experience. Omi D learns with more or less. We out.